Hey guys, just wanted to create a, a quick Photoshop tutorial on blending modes within your layers. Okay, so I'm just going to open up the same photo that I did for my last tutorial. Okay. <clears throat> Press the F key, and that'll give us a nice neutral backdrop. If we go Command Plus, it'll just enlarge it. So we've got a nice full screen on, um, yeah, so we can we can see the whole shot. Now if we go down to our adjustment layers button down here, we'll create a new curves layer. And we'll go up just above it, <coughs> excuse me, and click on soft light. Okay. Now, if we choose our brush over to the left, make sure we've got our black on top, which you can switch between the two by pushing the X key. Or if you haven't got black and white there in the first place, push the D key and it'll make them black and white. And then just push X until black's on top. Get a nice big, big brush with a soft edge, so 0% hardness, and we'll just paint through because it's a little bit too intense that but I like the I like the effect in the sky so it creates like a contrast effect and we'll just call that contrast okay we'll do a new adjustment layer curves okay now this time we'll go we'll go multiply in a really good way you can you can copy previous masks that you've done so you don't have to mask it all over again even though ours is a very simple one this time around just hit option click drag from one to to the next hit yes okay so it'll place your original mask it'll copy it to your new layer so if we go darken sky okay uh, we've got a nice nice dark sky there. You can actually change the opacity, which changes the intensity, zero being no effect, 100 being full effect, and anywhere in between. Okay, and then if we do another one, choose curves again. If we go screen, this will actually lighten whatever we, whatever we want. So it's lightened the whole image. Now if we click our paintbrush again, make sure we've got black on. We want to we want to mask out the sky because we don't want to lighten that. But instead of masking it like we just did before, you can actually copy and paste your previous masks that you've done. So if we option click on the one below, drag it up, let it go, click yes. Okay. Now, because we on the previous layer we actually masked out the foreground, instead of this time around we want to mask out the sky and leave the foreground exposed, what we can do, we can still copy it, but we just click uh, Command and then I for Invert, so we can invert the mask. So it looks the same, but black and white have switched. Okay, so now we've got our foreground is a lot brighter our dark sky is, is still dark, which is the way we want it um, at the moment. Okay, and now we can, we can lighten foreground. Let's just call it that for the time being. Brightness, contrast. Okay, so we're just going to apply an overall brightness to the image. Fifty looks pretty good, I think. Okay, and add a bit of contrast as well. Which sort of, yeah, always always goes well. So it doesn't leave your image flat with the with the brightness. Now, something that I've noticed while we've been working with the darkening and, and whatnot is our blue in our sky has sort of got to a state where it's it's a little bit distracting. Actually I might 
brightness is a little bit distracting at the moment. Might just take that off a little bit. Okay, so one thing I want to do is to desaturate that, that blue. One way you can do that, there's a, few, there's a few ways to do it, but one way you can do it is another adjustment layer. You click on Hue Saturation. And just, just leave it on Master. And just dial it back until it gets to a point that you're happy with. So we still want some colour there, but but not as intense as we had it. So that looks pretty good. And what we can do now is to mask out our foreground because we still want to retain the colour in there. And I'm going to actually intensify the colour there just subtly as well. So we'll get our brush. And we want you. And this is going to be a slightly different mask. So we'll make a new mask because I still want to retain colour in this area of the sky. So just under where the blue is so we can we can pull back our cliffs and our beautiful pinks and yellows and whatnot in the bottom of the sky there and even our rocks can pull a bit of colour back in those ones. So we'll see that we've just desaturated that sky so it's not not as controlling which is what it's all about it's about controlling the viewer's eye to particular parts of the image so yeah so they they can get the most out of it and what I'm going to do like I said before is just create another hue saturation layer and now we want to intensify the the foreground colors and only subtly so and also that that sky there so those pinks and whatnot we can we can draw the view in so if we just bump that up a little bit so I've got a positive so we've got 12 which is fine we've intensified those blues again so that's something that I that I didn't want to do so what we can use we can reuse that that mask that we created option click and drag drop yes okay now we've got inverted again so the colors are just on the foreground and then the sky is actually masks so we, we're going to swap the, the black and the white around again so command I so now, doing very subtly, and you might you might be able to see it. We've just intensified these colours, kept kept our blue desaturated that we did before. And one more thing is to create another curves adjustment layer. There we go. Multiply. A lot of photographers do something that's called vign vignetting which is darkening the edges or, or darkening certain parts of the photograph in particular the edges so that it they can direct the viewer around as they want to want to direct uh, direct the viewer around so if we get our brush again mine's already selected but if, if it's not be for brush or you can go and click over on your tools palette over here make sure black selected and we can just paint in or paint out rather the effect and just leave it on the edges okay so it's, it's quite an intense effect as we have it at the moment but we can change that opacity we can dial that right It's not, not too intense. Check that. So every convert vignette. <clears throat> Take that on and off. You'll see how much of a difference that can make. Maybe that's a bit too much. So if we say 50, so halfway. Whereas the viewer could be looking all, all around the image. If we do that, it sort of directs them to a central part. 
Um, and this could be, in this case, it's it's sort of the lower part of the sky here. It might be a tree, it might be a rock, it might be a person that you want to sort of accentuate the viewer's, the viewer's gaze to. Um, and yeah, that's how you do it. So I'll recap what we've done today. So I'll just click and hold and drag down our eyes over on the right here, back to our original image which looked like this. So it's quite a nice image to start with, um, but it's looking a little bit flat. So we've just had some nice contrast through the sky and lightened up the foreground as well, added some nice, some nice color saturation as well. So this is what we did. So we've got our contrast first. So a nice light contrast in the sky. Then we darkened the sky. Okay, so quite a quite an intense darkening. We light the foreground because it was getting a bit dark. We brightened the overall image as well. And then we decrease this saturation, this blue in the sky, because that was getting a bit controlling. So we, we knocked that back a little bit. Maybe you could come back even a little bit more. Like so. And then we saturated the colours just very subtly in the foreground to make them punch. And then we added a nice vignette around the edge there to control the viewer's gaze to around this area, which is which is the intention for me. Um, your photographs might be different, but um, yeah, that was that was the overall goal, and it might even still be a little bit, a little bit too dark, and just sort of take it out of the sky a little bit more. Okay, but it gives you a good insight on what you can actually do with blending modes, and um, yeah, I encourage you to have a look through the the blending menu, and. Yeah, play around with some of the other ones and see what they can actually do. You might find some that you prefer to use more than the ones that I use, which are the Multiply, Screen, and Softlight. Okay, until next time, see ya, bye.